Hello Game Day and welcome everybody. We are doing a very special series of episodes at the moment where we are interviewing some of the prospects going into the draft this year. And we're excited today to have Connor Stone with us. So Ponchi, give Connor the pump up that he deserves. Absolutely. So as you said, we've got Connor Stone here. He's the St. Kevin's football captain, which we absolutely love. He's a Skevies boy and a 2019 Premiership player with the Oakley Chargers in the NAB League. So Connor, please give us a hello game day. Hello, game day. Here we go. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, I told you we do have a couple of stitch-ups for you and your dad sent us a couple of uh, pearlers in. So... <laughs> One of the first ones, I had a good laugh at this one. Uh, in prep at St. Kevin's, you were asked to uh, give something up for Lent. Do you know what you wrote down and drew a picture of? Um, I think, I feel like it's a Ben Cousins story. So I think I said yes. drugs and alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can confirm. It was, <laughs> you, drew a, you drew a picture of Ben Cousins and you were, you were giving up drugs and alcohol for Lent. That is absolutely... <laughs> Ripper. I don't know how the teacher would have reacted to that, but that was an absolute classic. Now, another one, mate. We've got a photo. Can you tell us uh, about your role that you played in uh, the musical in Aladdin? Oh, no. He's, yeah, so a bit of backstory. So I've done, I've, I had, I played a girl's role, like nothing wrong with that, but kind of wanted to play a bloke's role in, in Aladdin. <laughs> and then me and a few mates thought it would be funny to trial out for this the most feminine role in the in the whole play and anyway we've gone up and we've sung our high pitch voices and we get brought in by the the music teacher and he goes oh you know you boys taking the piss and um we're like oh no no dead serious and um he goes oh well, well you've got the role and so yeah ended up ever ended up having to wear makeup on the on the night of um on the night of the latin so it wasn't yeah it wasn't great walking out in front of the crowd, but a few, few laughs here and there. Just for a bit of context, can <laughs> confirm that we have actually indeed got photos of you in Aladdin. You are the one oh, no. on the left, the tall one who looks not impressed. <laughs> you look silly. <laughs> in the slightest. So, you, mate, That's you did dope. not happy. <laughs> <He's dope. laughs> oh, now, another classic one we've got is that you got a stall each year for Easter with a few families. Uh, and can you remember the tattoo, the, the uh, fake tattoo that you got uh, on your stomach? Yes, I can. For, got, it's got the before six beers and it's a picture of a grandma. You flip it, flip it upside down and it's got after six beers and a, and a picture of a princess. So, yeah, a bit of a laugh with that one. I think we've got that one as well. <laughs> oh, I know. Now, we can't quite see it. I wish I could, I could rotate it, but... <laughs> Here yeah. we've got the you go. after six beers, and then if you before six beers, it looks like you know a grandpa, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you did stitch stitch up just, well there. No good. No good. <laughs> so those were the stitch ups we got. Now we do have a few things from just your junior playing years, and some questions that I want to ask. So yep. one of the questions was in under twelve, you played um, Bentley, who were top of the ladder, and East Melbourne needed to make finals. So do you remember what happened in that game? Yeah, um, I was playing, playing down forward and um, I was lucky that we started getting on top in the, in the second half and um, yeah, huge, huge credit to the, to the boys. You know, we, we, weren't, we were there about all year and then I um, was lucky enough to get on, a few of, end up, uh, get on the end of a few, a few goals in the last half and so I ended up, I think, kicking, kicking four or so. So it wasn't, wasn't a bad outing, but no, it was a good, good game from the group and one of the one of the good memories from junior footy. Yeah, I can confirm you kicked two of the last quarter goals to seal the game and very humble, not pumping yourself up too much. And then <laughs> do you remember what happened when you played Bentley in the first week of the uh the semi finals? Yeah, I, we um I think kicked the first two goals of the game and then we thought we we thought we were roaring, but um ended up getting belted by like fifty points. And um I don't know, were you, were you playing in the game, Dad did the endorphins thing, the smiling one? The smart the endorphins. I yeah. was there was one a bit later that I've got about your dad, by the way, if anyone he obviously doesn't know, he is my old footy coach and he says some of the most classic one liners or things when he's talking about footy and pumping the boys up. So one of them was a half time speech and we were down and he said, You 
you can't put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste tube because it's already out. <laughs> and that was seems like a metaphor for all right, thing, it's already done. Move on to the next. So what's the endorphins one? Oh, it's just it's just a like bit of psychology stuff for old young. It was um if you smile, you release endorphins, gets you to play a bit better. And I was um yeah, I was I was you know on the verge of bowling my eyes out when we we're down fifty points in the last quarter and I just hear him yelling out from the sidelines, just smile, mate, just smile. So yeah. Uh, He's a ripper and I love his uh the mentality and the way he goes about bringing things um from the coaching perspective. So I love hearing that. And the, the one thing I wanted to allude to with that game against Bentley is apparently that the coach from the other team, they manned you up with about two or three players just to try and nullify you. So obviously it worked in the end, unfortunately for you boys. Yeah, just, unfortunately. Yeah, it shows the calibre of you as a junior. Now, another question I had was for the Lightning Premiership. Um, and you played, I think, at Paran and Glen Iris. Um, what was that experience like to play on Anzac Day? Um, and did anything significant happen that day? Um, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was pretty cool getting up at, well, you know, I was half asleep at, at 5 a.m. or whatever in the morning and then um, got got the egg and bacon roll after and played, you know, a few games of footy and it was, yeah, it was good fun. Like, there was two East Melbourne teams and each, we played a half each and it was just, you know, out there having fun with your mates. wasn't taken too seriously and, um, you know, I, think I ended up getting... Um, getting the medal for best player which was which was all right but still still haven't got it so i wanted to get get the word down to east Melbourne and tell them bring them a medal but <laughs> <laughs> Mate, they're going to keep it for memorabilia now that if you get picked yeah. up it's going to be the biggest thing around the club so another one that was interesting is you've obviously had a pretty strong junior career but surprisingly you didn't make interleague division one teams until under 15 so can you talk us through the under 13, 14 years missing it and how that kind of shaped you a little bit? Yeah, I think pro, um, under 13s are what, like, it didn't phase me too much because it was pretty similar. In It was just a lightning premiership sort of thing, lightning a few rounds, and um, like I wasn't physically developed. And it was pretty similar in under 14s as well. But probably it was probably my first learning curve with in terms of resilience. Um, I, got, I actually got cut from... The squad. So I was in the initial squad and then got cut before the start of the season. Went back to East Melbourne and did all right. And they gave me the call call up again and made the twos. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Like we made the grand final and got got rolled by Yarra, which wasn't ideal. But yeah, and then made it in under 15s next year. And yeah, it was sort of, I guess that yeah first sign of resilience. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like you've hit your stride from there. And moving up to, I think it would have been. Year 11, so last year, um, you actually make the APS rep squad. So the APS, the best schools in the APS and the AGSV play off in a game. Um, and only two boys that year were picked as 17-year-olds. And I think it was yourself and Jamara Yugel Hagen, who was one of the top prospects coming into this draft. So what was that experience like for that game? Yeah, I think it, it, oh, probably, it wasn't great because we was, were playing on a mud patch out of Wesley. And it was just a, a shit old, but um, like, yeah, I guess it was a good experience playing against or playing with the blokes from the APS, like like Jamara and um, you know, Charlie Dean and those boys. And yeah, probably probably wasn't the best standard of footy because of the conditions, but um, yeah, it was it was fun regardless. Absolutely. And now another question from last year's season: there was a game where you played against Geelong Grammar, and we'll put a bit of footage up in a minute. Um, but can you talk us through that game? Because from what I've heard, like I said earlier, we were, you were down at half time, um, and then I think you've kicked four last quarter goals to steal the team and, and get the victory for the boys. So can you just talk us through that game? Because it seems like a pretty uh, pretty amazing effort by yourself. Yeah, I think oh, probably it wasn't just me. The whole the whole team lifted after half time, especially um, in the in the fourth quarter. And I, I was probably just lucky. I was in a good spot a couple of times and got a few good handballs out the back. But um, yeah, it was you know it was pretty awesome because we had a pretty unsuccessful season last year, and to you know that was like you know, bottom of the table clash. But to get that win just sort of boosted the, mor- the morale for the next weeks. And um, yeah, it was, it was awesome to to pick up the win. Absolutely, I think moosey has got the vision here. I certainly um, do, and this is a pretty good running goal. So is one of your strengths, we'll get this on the 
the, the vision out. Is one of your strengths obviously your speed and your run? Because for anyone watching this, there's a fair bit of dash in this. Here we go. Yeah. Plenty of dash. And he's off to the races. If anyone watching, he's got the ball on the wing and he's just broken away, taking about five bounces and run all the way to the goal. And I'm assuming would have just snuck the lead in there. So it's, is that something you do? Is that like your, your strength with your running and your dash? Is that what you use? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably my main one. And probably being able to play all position on the ground. I think dad probably helped me in terms of both things. Just um, having faith in, in my pace and on the other end, just having, just knowing that I can play all positions. And um, yeah, it helps, helps when you get a bit of space to run into. And um, it's something I try and do when I get the footy, but obviously in terms of pressure and stuff, that, that opportunity is not always there, but good, good to um, get a run when I can. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and the last amazing feat is that you're a bottom major in a premiership winning team. And, Admittedly, everyone knows now who the superstars in your team were with, with Anderson and Rao. So what was that kind of like in that premiership and winning as a bottom major, which is a pretty tough thing to break into a team and win a premiership for the NAB League? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. So it was the first premiership I've won, so which, which made it even better. And, um, you know, I, like a, it, the connection wasn't as strong as the boys with school because they're all my best mates, but... Regardless, I still still loved it and got a special bond with those boys now. And you know, in that last, I guess, five week period, we were rocking up and training three times a week together, and you know, having laughs out out on the track, and and also doing hard work. And you know, to see how those blokes train, like Rowley and Ando, just their competitive nature, and then what they what that translate into on um, game day is just something you've got to admire and. Um, you know, certainly something that you try and uh, build and put into your own game. Are you surprised to see how well uh, Anderson and Rowley are doing now? Nah, nah. Oh, um, I think Noah probably surprised me a bit. Um, just, but he's he adjusted super well. But Rowley, I like. I had a fair idea that he was going to be that type of player. Was he just absolutely dominant in juniors? Yeah, I think he. Like his his best game that would have been sort of coveraged and, and noticed was that grand final. But against us at school, he kicked he kicked like four goals three and had fifty touches or whatever some ridiculous number. And we had we had two blokes tagging him. So and if you there. when you see like those blokes how they are playing now, does it give you having having like you know played alongside them or whatever? Does it give you some real inspiration as to how you could transition into AFL football if, if you do get that chance as well? Yeah, it certainly does. It shows that, I guess, their their ability to adapt to from junior footy to senior footy has been pretty good. And, you know, they're probably lucky they're at Gold Coast and got a fair bit of exposure. And certainly for Noah, who played the whole season, he could build, build upon in every game. So, yeah, it certainly does give you that confidence to, you know, if I'm lucky enough that I can have a an impact next year rather than just being sort of there out in the field. Yeah, I can imagine it would, mate. And, and how have you been getting creative with your, with your training this year, considering that you're in Victoria? Yeah, it's, it's, it was interesting. I, I was doing a lot with one of my mates from school, uh, just in three or four mornings a week. And then some of the boys from Oakley in um, Metro as well. And then the sort of second lockdown happened and, you know, only out, allowed outside 5Ks. And so I was just... It was mainly either with myself and I got a, um, one of my mates, he knows a personal trainer. So I went down there and to do my weights. And I think he's, he's helped me so much in terms of my strength and power and especially giving me resources to use too. But yeah, I have to, have to sort of make up a few drills where you can you know, be sort of like a, um, you know, nine or 10 players normally you'd use, whereas you, you only have two or three. So it's, um, been been interesting, but good good regardless. Yeah, I can imagine you would have had to really stay, you know, motivated and also stay disciplined, because I know when I was uh, when those lockdowns started in Melbourne, and me and my housemates would lock ourselves in the house three nights a week and just drink, but like bundles of goon. <laughs> so I'm sure you weren't. I'm sure you weren't doing that, but Ponch and I were. So have you been? Have you been staying disciplined? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I've been pretty good. Like, um, probably more so. Like footy's footy's pretty easy for me to stay motivated, but more so school. Like I wouldn't say I struggle, but there's certainly been days where 
I finished finished online school and didn't pick up a pen after that, and you know, it's probably going to hinder my result a little bit. But um, yeah, I think the the um, yeah overall, I think I stayed pretty disciplined, and I still still try to catch up with my mates too, and that helps as well. Yeah, well, that's good, man. And at least you know you sounds like you did put in the effort, and you're speaking to two blokes who did absolutely shockingly in VCE here. So you <laughs> definitely would be doing the best out of us three, that's for sure. <laughs> Now, have you been having regular interactions with recruiters as well? And then what's that been like? Yeah. Um, so in the um, sort of term three holidays and start of term three, there was a fair few interviews and um, they've sort of stopped for a little bit um, and then picked up again during these, during the past holidays and over the past couple of weeks. And yeah, they're like the, they're mostly the same questions, just finding out about your family and then, had a few second ones that are more um, psychology based and they, the questions put you on the spot a little bit more. But um, yeah, I think I've enjoyed it. They each, like they offer something different. You know, there'll be one or two questions that are different, but um, yeah, I've, I think I've enjoyed it. Well, mate, um, I'm glad that you've had that experience because you're about to get interviewed by another recruiter. All right. Myself. Um, and I'm really looking for character to see how you think on your feet here, think on the spot. So um, first one, I'm just going to give you a few scenarios and a few questions, and I just want to see how you react to them, okay? My first one, you get picked up by St Kilda. You walk into the club rooms the first day, onto the massage table. You're lying face down, and you see none other than Fraser Gehrig come in with a bit of baby oil, about to slip, slop, slap. What do you do? <laughs> Oh, I'd be getting up and running. <laughs> oh, geez, that, that would hurt. That would hurt. <laughs> Tomato sauce in the fridge or the pantry? Ah, uh, pantry. Pantry, he reckons. Now, are you, a, are you a more of a hunter or a gatherer? Um, oh, I don't know. Probably, probably a hunter. More of a hunter. Uh, do you believe in Bigfoot? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Does not believe in Bigfoot. Interesting. If you were a cereal, which one would you be and why? Oh, probably Nutri Grain because that's what I eat. So I love that. Mm, and it's got the Iron Man attached to it, like you didn't say Fruit Loop. Now, <laughs> if you were 80 years old, what advice would you give to your grandchild? Uh, probably something I've learned through this. Just control what you can control. Don't try and do too much. That's good. I like that. How does the internet work? Oh, no idea. <laughs> half, half the time, it doesn't even work for me. So, <laughs> Yeah, we did notice that at the start there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Donald Trump or Joe Biden for the USA election? Oh, Biden. Trump, Trump's a bit of a nuffy. Well, they both are, but... <laughs> Um, get a bit of change now all right if there was a movie made about your life who would play you and why oh probably DiCaprio or someone like that someone that's considered good looking <laughs> you do look like a young DiCaprio mate I would give you that right? <laughs> nah, I reckon that's a bit rich <laughs> <laughs> no nah, pump yourself up you've been, so another one you've been given an elephant you can't sell or give away the elephant. What do you do with the elephant? Oh, don't, you don't need to do your learners or P's, P plates for an elephant, so I'll just ride them around town. Love that. That's a good answer. All right. You find $10 million in cash in a suitcase. What do you do with it? Jeez. Oh, Conscience coming in here. Yeah. Uh, I probably... Ooh, probably take it home. Take take it a little bit home, say uh, <laughs> five million, and then hand that into the coppers. And that's a good answer. That's a good answer. All right, you're shipwrecked on a deserted island. You can take two items. What do you take? Oof. Oh. oh. I reckon. I reckon a footy. I'll bring that. We love that. And then. And some food. I don't know. Maybe some barbecue ribs. 
<laughs> if it's an endless, endless um, slide, mate, it sounds like you're trying to go out with a with a bang rather than be sustainable. <laughs> any, <laughs> any danger in a spear or a knife? <laughs> <laughs> mate, yeah, just hope, hope, I, hope I kick the footy hard enough to kill some. Yeah. <laughs> now, last one. Which I which animal do you identify with most, and why? I oh, know I've always liked crocodiles. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a big one, but just been, been fascinated by what they do and um, I guess how they go about it. Stealthy. Mm. Crocodile. Interesting. All right, that's all I've got for you, mate. I've found out all I need to know, and I reckon I'd be picking you up, mate. So great answers, Ponchy boy. Have you got anything else before we uh, head off? Uh, I was just one quick one. How, how do you find? And I, I think this is just. A, just a real curiosity uh, how do you go in the kitchen and all that stuff because if you do go interstate how do you think you'd actually fare sort of looking after yourself doing the washing around the house because i found when i first moved out i was absolutely atrocious I, i'd cook i put pizzas in the oven that would burn every second time i cook it so i, I couldn't even do that right Lots uh, of frozen you, meals how do you reckon you would go if you, you fared it interstate yeah i think you know i'd probably transition r- relatively easily but in saying that i'm not i'm not a superb cook so I'd, it'd just be cooking cooking a pasta or two minute cook up meals from coals and then you know, gradually ease my way into it but i think i think i should be able to do my own washing but if there's any any ironing or anything like that i think i'll just be wearing scrunched up shirts <laughs> yeah i think that's the last thing you got to worry about the ironing but yeah it seems like you've got that as well and one other quick question i want to ask um for me obviously i've been in your shoes with you know doing school footy and then trying to play rep footy. And this year is unfortunate that you guys kind of missed out on that. And what was the biggest disappointment for you? Was it not being able to captain your team this year or was it not being able to go through the Vic Metro um, and National Carnival? So what, what do you feel like you missed out on this year? I think not being able to play school footy. That was probably what coming into the year. Um, like obviously had that success with Oakley and we're looking good again. And Vic Metro would have been awesome to play there. Um, but yeah, school footy, like with all my best mates and you know, hopefully, I say this in a lie way, hopefully it's the last time that I play with all of them in terms of hopefully I get drafted. But um, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough um, not, not getting to play school footy. It's always good fun. Yeah, I can imagine, man. I think that was, yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. School football was really hard. I even had to have the decision to either play in the trial games or play for the Xavier game, which is the biggest game of the year, and it oh, nearly geez. pulled me apart. Yeah. So I have been thinking about you boys this year because it would have been very difficult for me personally to go through what you've gone through. But it seems like you've done it very well, mate. And from us, all the best with the draft. We'll obviously be keeping a close eye. And, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing what your future kind of holds. And hopefully, you know, you get to an AFL club and you really succeed. Yeah, sweet. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're doing, doing an awesome job with this podcast as well, I might add. It's... Fired a few laughs for me over the, over the past couple of weeks. So, well done. Thanks very much, Thanks, mate. We're, we're having good fun. And uh, don't forget about us when you guys get to the big leagues, mate. Uh, give a few <laughs> shout outs. <laughs> give a few hello Thanks, games. I'm, I'll be on the sideline asking for a hello game day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Connor. We really appreciate it, mate.